Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Did you notice the, tr the title? How many of you noticed the title of the sermon? So, you see, I got my water. I, all I need is more papers. And then I could be up here for like two hours and make you guys suffer. <laughs> That's not the type of suffering we're talking about. How many of you were, uh, were tortured on the way to the church today? How many of you were sawn in half? I almost thought I saw a hand way back there, but that might have been Jake. <laughs> How many of you have been beaten or held by a sword for your faith? Some were tortured. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with the sword. They went about in sheep, skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, wandering about in deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And those were the most faithful ones. There was a plethora of good stuff between the gospel lesson, the epistle, the Old Testament. In this life, as Martin Luther said one time, we receive in this life only the first fruits of the Spirit, from Romans chapter 8. The new birth is not complete, but only begun in us. You ever notice, and probably the last two years can bring a, a fresh light to this, at one time you're joyful in your spirit, at another you're fearful and alarmed, maybe scared. At one time you have an intense love, strong in the faith and hope, and the other time you're kind of weak and cold and doesn't feel very good. Anybody relate with that? The last two years? I mean, come on. The last election? Remember, we got an election coming up. Some visitors are probably wondering, why is he bringing up the election? <laughs> Shakes our faith. You look at the, our ancestors, the ancients, the ancient Christians, the trials they faced. Do they even compare with ours? I mean, I've never seen anybody sawn in half. I've never seen anybody stoned. Although I have heard about it, if you drive down, if the bus goes down a certain road in Israel, in Jerusalem, they say they will start throwing stones at the bus. That's as close as I ever got. We didn't go down that road. The bus driver would not drive down it. But what about our life when we walk out and we go to the grocery store or we go to Walmart or who knows where? Do we ever get ridiculed being a Christian? Has it ever happened to you? 
This is, this is where it's a two-way right now. Has it ever happened to you where you've tried to share Jesus with somebody or you were trying to be nice and people wouldn't even accept it? Or they think you're a little strange because you're trying to be nice? <laughs> Has that ever happened? I mean, people are surprised when you try to do something nice. Hold the door or say hello. That maybe is the closest it gets. And maybe, maybe you've got other stories, and I invite you to, to chime in with those. But the ancients, Abraham, offering his son to die. Imagine Abraham coming up, putting his son on the altar. He's got the knife in his hand, and he's ready to go. And he's going to go all the way to down until God says, nope, stop. His righteousness is because of his faith. We are righteous because of our faith. Maybe we aren't under the same uh, affliction as the ancients. But all the same, Christianity is under fire. And you kind of know it. And the crazy thing is, our faith is in trial, and we might not even know it. Because it's subtle. It's really, really subtle. And that's probably even more dangerous than being outright. It'd probably be better if people would stone us or try to kill us. Because they're trying to do it gradually, without us re even realizing it. The face of Christianity has moved. We were not warned about it in these texts, but we were warned about it, that people would uh, get itchy ears and want to go where they want to go to hear the things they want to hear. After all, people don't want to be told they're a sinner. And that's a problem. So that's, that's what I'm talking about. Sins that were in the past are no longer are in some arenas. But as far as God, they are. But the world we're living in How do, you, how do you tell someone about Jesus, his forgiving grace and mercy, when they don't think what they're doing is a sin? That's a, pro that's a big, big problem. And that's where I think we find the trial, in that subtleness in what's going on in our society. Not if you know what I'm talking about. Do this if you don't. Because I want to make sure we're all on the same page. But through this, we can look at the ancient Christians. We can look at those that were tortured. Those that were killed. We can look at John that was poisoned and no. He kept the faith. We can look at Paul and know despite everything, he kept the faith.
We can even look at our own Martin Luther. Because you realize, by all accounts, he should have been put to death, according to Rome. But it was by the grace of God he wasn't. Just like Moses, we will be persecuted for being on God's side. Like Abraham, we will be asked to make sacrifices for our faith. We don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know what's going to happen in the stock market, the, the government, the next election. But we, will, we need to trust God like Abraham did as we, as we go forward. Like other ancient believers, we've had to forego wealth, comforts, maybe even friendships. Anybody got a relative that's not a Christian? How's Christmas? I, I, can ex, I can relate with that. I have a relative who is not a Christian. Christian. Christmas can go really, really well, and then something gets mentioned, and all of a sudden you got this heated discussion. So we don't get together for Christmas a lot. <laughs> because we remain in the faith no matter how much it hurts because some of our relatives do not believe in Christ as we do or our friends or maybe it's a neighbor who knows and the one thing is God's faithfulness far surpasses ours And that is the only way we can face and keep our faith in the trial. The perfecter of our faith in Hebrews. The perfecter. You should find that comforting. It's not us. It's what he has done in us. It's what he continues to do in us. He forgives our sins and cleanses us. I like that. I almost sound like church bells. <laughs> but he cleanses us. And he's cleansing us our whole life. He provides for us. Like the manna in the wilderness. He provides the word of God for us. Forgiveness of sins. Baptism. Holy communion to feed us. With his very body and blood. To sustain us in the faith until he comes again. We are very fortunate. We can look back into the Old Testament, New Testament, Old Testament. We can look back. We can see the stories of the ancients. Abraham, Moses, Daniel, Paul. And on and on and on. And we can see how they triumphed in the faith. And even we have here among us those who have suffered, those who have suffered loss of loved ones that we can also look to 
who have remained in the faith, faith despite the things going on in their life. So I encourage you, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. You ever gone fishing? Have you ever gotten your line tangled? And it sometimes becomes like a rat's nest? It just, it, it can really get tangled up really, really bad. That's what I think when I, the sin that so easily entangles. But let us run with per- perseverance. The race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus. The pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And he's working on that in us. That's why I always encourage, you know, be in your Bible. Come to church, hear his word. We're hearing his word through the hymns. We're hearing his word in Bible study. We hear his word when we're sharing it with each other and our neighbors. And when we taste His body and blood. We're receiving his word. He is the incarnate word. And for the joy set before him, he endured on the cross. Scorning its shame. We suffer here. Just as he had suffered. Maybe it's not comparable But just as he had suffered, died, and rose again, we shall suffer, die, and rise again. Not that we got to go looking for it. Not that we like suffering, because I don't know anybody that does. But we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus because no matter what Satan does and we'll talk about him later in the Bible study a little bit no matter what he does no matter how fast he throws the darts towards us it's not going to win because Christ has already won He's already given us forgiveness of sins and always uh, has covered us with the blood of Jesus. The founder and perfecter of our faith. What a great gift he has given us. Amen.